come to today's session. So today we are starting to look at the 2021 Grade 12 GCE Mathematics Paper 2. So in Paper 2 there are 12 questions that we are going to cover and we are going to cover these 12 questions over 12 episodes. So each episode will focus on a specific question to ensure that we give you details and tips on how to get the maximum possible marks from each question. It is possible to get a distinction in mathematics and it is very, very easy. So without wasting much of your time, please join me as we look at question one. So question A needs simplify. So what are we simplifying? Simplify a to the power 2 x to the power 2 minus b to the power 2 y to the power 2 over a multiplied by x plus b multiplied by y. So that's what we are simplifying. So if you look at the denominator, the denominator, the denominator is already simplified. So where we are expected to do operation or manipulation is on the top. So this one a to the power 2x to the power 2 minus b y to the power b, b, b square multiplied by y square. This can be also written as a square x square minus uh, or plus 0x okay minus b y b square y square. This can also be written like that. So now, if you look at this, what you notice here is we have a general quadratic equation given by this ax squared plus bx plus c. This is a general quadratic equation. So what you notice from here is what you can take out, when you can note from here is basically a is equal to this one, which is a in this case is equal to a squared, then b is basically equal to zero, then c is basically equal to this part, which is c is equal to basically minus b square, b square y square. That's the case. So having identified that, we know the best way to factorize uh, a quadratic equation is to find the product. So the product is basically equal to this a multiplied by c. So in this case, it's this one multiplied by this one. So we get minus a square b square y square. So we're just multiplying this one, a square multiplied by that, so this one just become one thing. That's a product. Then the sum. What's the sum? The sum is what, what is here, which is b. So in this case, what's b? b is zero. Then what are the factors? So once we discover that the sum is a zero, what you're saying is you're looking at the case of the perfect square. Okay, so the two factors are square roots. They are the same. One is positive, one is negative. Okay, so in this case, what you notice here is, what are the two things that you can multiply to get uh, this? So I know for me to get a square, I need to multiply a square, a by a, to get a square. Okay? To get b, I need to multiply a b itself. Okay? So I'm trying to uh, simplify the way you identify this. Once you understand this concept, it's much more easier. So a times a is a, a square. So then b times b is b square. You get then y times y is y square. So these are the factors. So you've seen these factors? Such that when you multiply this, you multiply this one and this one, you get this part. But one is positive, one is negative. So this is negative, one is positive. So that when you add them, they should cancel each other. Once you do that, then it becomes much more easier. So I can substitute here this zero with these two. So I'll end up, let me use a different color. So I'll end up with a square x square minus a b y then x because of this x then plus a b y x then minus, remember this minus here? This whole thing is a minus. So minus b square y square. Okay, once you do that it's much more easier then you can factor out what is common between this one and this one. So you see that there's a, there's a here, then there's x. So I can take out a, x, out, 
Then this one into this one, a into a square is a, and x into x is x. Then minus, then this one and this one out, then I remain with b, y. They will cancel each other. Then plus, even here I fact out what is common, so I have y, y, then I have b, b. So in this case it becomes b, y outside, then I have a, x minus c, uh, basically b, y. So what you notice here is these ought to be the same. If they're different, you've made a mistake. Remember that principle. Then I can factor out this, which is common outside. Then by factoring out, I mean with a x minus b y. Then this one into this one is just a x because this one and this one will cancel. Then plus. Then this one into this one, these will cancel. Then I mean with b y. So you see. So this is is what I need to replace here with. Okay, then we can easily now get to finalize our answer. So I have a x minus b minus b y then multiply by a x plus b y then over a x plus b y. You see? This and th that cancel. So here, if I simplify this one, I'll just end up with this, which is a x minus b y. So I had to take this route to, ex to explain to you what it means so that you have a better appreciation of what is happening. Okay, then after that, once you get this concept, it's much more easier. You can easily simplify that. So this is how you answer part A. So once you see this, these two, that they are all squares, it's much more easy, straightforward for me to just, from here, I bring it in this. But I needed to explain so that you get the concept what is going on. So if they are all squares, you just separate these two and get that answer. So let us go to B. So B, B leads, given the geometric progression for Two, one, find the seventh term. So the geometric progression is always in paper two. Remember, then arithmetic progression is in paper one. So geometric progression is given by a the first term r n minus one, where r is the common term. So r is a common term or common ratio. Okay, so the common ratio is found by comparing the second term to the we divide it. You divide it by um, the first term. Then you compare also the third term you divided by the second term. If this is the same, then it's a common ratio. So we have the first term is a the second term is a is a two. So the second term is a two. So we have a, a two basically two divided by the first term four. We are getting half. Then we go to the the third one is one over two. The third one is a one, the second one is a two, we are getting that f. So f is a common ratio. So we've known what r is, we know what a is. A is the first term, which is four. So in this case, our geometric progression becomes four multiplied by basically 0 0.5, which is f. Okay. Or if you want, you can write it as a fraction, which is basically uh, one over two to the power one n minus 1. So now, in this case, we are being asked to find the seventh term. And remember, this formula for the geometric progression is given to you in uh, the sum to infinity. I'll come to that. So this one, we have basically 4 multiplied by 1 over 2. Then n, what is n? Is the seventh term. So 7 minus 1. So we end up with 4 multiplied by 1 over 2. 7 minus 1 is a 6. So remember calculators are allowed. So calculators are allowed. So at this point you can use the calculator. Once you use the calculator, or if you want you can do 4 multiplied by 0 0.5 to the power 6. Use the calculator, you end up with 1 over 16. So 1 over 16 is basically our seventh term. Okay, so that's part T. But uh, B, Loma numeral 1. Then let us go to uh, Loma numeral 2, the sum of the first nine terms. So this formula now is given to you. 
and the second page is given to you. So we have a the first term, then one minus r to the power uh, n, then over one minus r. So only when r is less than one. So in this case, the common ratio is 0 0.5, which is less than 1. So if that's the case, we can easily uh, use uh, this uh, principle. So let me just uh, create space here so that I have enough space. Okay. Then we can now go on to substitute. Remember, we go on to substitute. So Sn is equal to, so we are summing the first element, 9 terms. So we have the first term is a 4, then a 1 minus 0 0.5, then, so this 0 0.5 you raise it to the power, uh, basically, I mean 9, because n is 9, then over 1 minus 0 0.5. So what you end up with basically is, uh, basically, um, 4, then 1 minus 0 0.5 to the power 9, then over then 0 0.5 which is basically 8 multiplied by 1 minus 0 0.5 to the power 9 then once you multiply this once you multiply that you will get about a 7.9 uh, now this is not the answer because remember if the answer is not exactly you give it to 3 significant figures. So this is the first significant figure, the second, the third. So it's 7.98. So here the answer is 7.98 as our answer to three significant figures. Or if one you can give it exactly, so you can place on the calculator. So you place on the, uh, if you're using a casual, you place on the one written A, B, C, then the answer will change to a fraction, which will give you basically a fraction will be 7 uh, 63 over uh, 64 as the answer that's for this part okay so let us look at uh, question C so question C question C is asking us to find uh, let me just also create space here I just want to create a bit of space so question C is asking us find the geometric mean of 196 and 15,625. Again, this question is almost always there. So, the geometric mean, the geometric mean is given by, so, x bar, so we shall call it x bar, gel mean is given by, so what you do is you multiply the numbers we are given, number one, number two, up to n, then find the nth root. So in this case, we're given two numbers. So n is 2. So what you do is you're saying, so here is a 2. Then you're saying 196 multiplied by 15,625. Okay. Now remember when n is 2 here, the, n, the, the, the second root, it means which number should you, multi you multiply itself twice to get that number. So that's a square root we are talking about. So that's the square root we are talking about. So what you need to do is use your calculator, multiply 96, 96 multiply by 15, 6, 25. You, then you find the square root. Okay, you find the square root of that number, you end up with 1,750 as the geometric mean. So basically, this is how we get this free two marks. So basically, this is how you answer question one to get the nine marks. Thank you for joining us. Join us as we look at question two in the next episode.